Okay, so this is Transformations of the Comics Plane, part four. Um, so, very familiar starting position. We've got the Z plane and Dewey plane, and there are other representations in terms of X and Y and U and V. This is the, the question this time. Um, different than before. We've still got the same sort of Mobius transformation. W is equal to uh, 2Y divided by Z. Um, we've got a different question. It's a show that this circle which is given as a loci rather than um, a Cartesian format in the Z-plane is mapped onto a line in the W-plane and they want the equation for the line in the W-plane. So this circle, if you just draw it on here, is based at 3i, right? And it has a radius of 3, so it's this kind of circle like this and that's going to be mapped over here to a line somewhere. Um, the difference this time is the information isn't like the imaginary axis or real axis or x equals y or anything like that. It's um, it's very much complex numbering. And that just changes slightly how we approach the question. Um, the beginning is exactly the same. We still would like to rearrange um, this equation by times in by z and then dividing by w to get uh, z in terms of w. That's still useful. And then we still want to use this information here. But rather than computing this thing and working out the real imaginary parts, because we don't actually know anything about the real imaginary parts, we may as well just take this and plug it straight in there where the z is. So we go from z minus 3i is equal to 3 to 2i over w minus 3i is equal to 3. And then we've got to sort of manipulate that. So the first thing I'll do is times by w. Now, modulus is a great. Modulus functions are really useful. Uh, you can always convert this to be uh, the modulus of the one number divided by the modulus of the other number. Uh, we learn about the fact that when you divide two complex numbers, it's the same as dividing their moduluses. That was a rule we did a while back. Uh, we used it in um, dividing two complex numbers. You divide their moduluses, you take away their arguments. Oh, here also, um, we could take this i out as a factor now, this is where I rely on you guys knowing what the modulus of i is. Well, i is just here, isn't it? And it's got a length of 1, so its modulus is 1. So actually, this i can get rid of it. You can do the same thing for minus numbers as well. Um, in fact, we'll do that just to show that that's possible. So we get rid of this as being 1, and we're left with 2 minus 3w over w is equal to 3. Um, in fact, we could do a swap a sign here, so we can take a minus number out as a factor, and that will make this 3w minus 2, so you times it by minus 1, you get minus 3 and plus 2 again, so it's the same thing. And the length of minus 1, yep, the length of minus 1 is also 1, right, minus 1 is length 1. So we've got this. Now, I've done most of that just to sort of show you how you can make some of these more awkward looking modulus equations look a little bit nicer just by playing about with taking out the bottom and factorizing out you know i's and minus ones and things uh, we can then times by w and we get a familiar looking equation right um, this is almost the equation of a straight line i mean if you took this three out as a factor the threes would cancel and you'd get um w almost on the other side so you then see what it is in fact let's do that So I pull 3 out as a factor, so the modulus of 3 is 3, so I can just write like this. Of course, then the 3s cancel. Oh, and do you remember loci? Because if you remember loci here, this is really easy. You go over here, you find 2 thirds. You go over here, where's a 0. And then this is the line that goes exactly between them. The line through a third, so this is the line y, uh, sorry, u is equal to a third. I'm actually done if you remember that. If you don't remember that, it's not the end of the world. You probably wouldn't think to take the three out if you weren't thinking about moduluses. You'd probably still be up here. And it's not too bad to do it um, the long way, doing it Cartesian way. In fact, I'll show you that because it is interesting. So this time we would then want to work this out. It's here we haven't got any inspiration from loci, so we do the other thing, which is to convert it back into Cartesian equation, like we learned about at the beginning of loci, and then hopefully we'll recognise the Cartesian equation um, when we get there. So we take the W, we change it for U plus IV, 
and we change this W to be U plus IV. We then do the moduluses. Well, before that, we need to group together here the real imaginary terms. So we've got 3U minus 2 is one of the terms, and over here we've got plus 3VI as being the other term. Just here we've got a 3 times a U plus IV. Square these, so U real part there squared, and then the imaginary part here all squared. Don't forget to square the 3 as well. Here we've got 3 squared and we've got u squared and we've got v squared. Now, what I've done, you see, is I've squared this bit here and square rooted it and square rooted it. And then to get rid of the square root sign, I've squared the 3 and squared this and squared this. So remember, there will be the square root here and here, but I've skipped that stage just because you can see how much paper I've got left. Now we expand this out so we get 9u squared. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, doubled is minus 12, and then we have to do 4, and then here we've got plus 9v squared. Over here we've got a 9u squared and a 9v squared, and look, the 9v squared cancels out, and the 9u squared cancels out, and we're left with, well, minus 12u plus 4 equals 0, or better written as 12u is equal to 4, or even better written as u is equal to a third. Oh, just as we had got up here. Now, see, this is the advantage of um, spotting loci here, is that you can manage to just skip a few steps, but you've actually had to do quite a lot of hard work there conceptually. Whereas going through here, if you think about it, we haven't really done any hard work, we've just computed it, and we've got this as our answer. Um, so it really is up to you how you want to uh, approach that kind of question. Let me just mention a little bit of differences here, because um, I think... Lots of these questions, they start off, they look so similar, yet this is a completely different format than the last two I've done. Why is that? Well, it's all about what information you're given here. Um, we always rearrange for Z. But then, if we're given this kind of modulus information, we will then just plug it straight in there. Okay. If we're given in terms of X and Y, we'll start rearranging this to get what X is equal to and what Y is equal to. But we're given the modulus information, we plug it in, and then we try to tap it in a kind of modulus loci format. And you see that if you do it properly, you end up getting out for a loci here, you can't often get a loci out here. On the off chance you can't see it, which is common, you can't see it, then you can re always resort back to doing Cartesian equations because you can always turn uh, complex ones back into Cartesian if you get stuck. Either way, you get the answer, but the idea is to begin with, don't don't try and make this into a Cartesian equation or something because it's a very complicated one. If it's not a straightforward X and Y format, then try to just compute it using your standard stuff that you know about um, modulus and arguments. I will show you another example. There will be a part five coming up, but that's all there is for today. So good luck with this, and I will see you next time.